welcome to Born Under Punches, the show where we address the violence of being alive, um, and we touch on real hard-hitting topics, um, just anything that's going to corner a debate. Often we come to blows, um, talking about just, you know, things that really get people's blood boiling. Um, so I guess today I'm going to bring out my uh, co-host in a second here, um, but we're going to talk about... Um, some pretty tough things today, specifically, um, which character everyone thinks you should marry on Stardew Valley. Uh, Kelly, why don't you come out here and give us your opinion? So, I don't get intro music anymore? Oh no, we had to cut that from the budget. What, what kind of beer are we buying? It's truly amazing how quickly the budget changes. Mm. But thank you to whichever anonymous donor uh, gave us our music back. It's it's the most important part of the show, as we know. <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Um... Yeah, so I was trying to pick a topic that was going to get you right riled up, and the first thing that came to my mind was um, Stardew. And like a scale of 1 to 10, how mad are you that I married Leah? Well, I, I don't think I would ever get mad about something like that. I'm a very just kind of laissez-faire, live and let live kind of guy. Like, you know, I say, hey, if, if it makes Nicole happy, that's what I want. That's my philosophy you know, as a friend, that's my philosophy as a co-host. That's mm -hmm. my philosophy as a, uh, a competitor for uh, Leah's attention. Yeah. Yeah, and certainly, like, a digital wife only has room for one person in her life. So. Well, I also assume it's, like, Neopets, where if you don't, you know, like if you didn't, if you didn't feed Neopets, like, in real time, they died, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also feel like if I haven't talked to my, my, like, pixelated farm wife in... I'm gonna say like three years. Mm. I don't know. Does that make me a bad like a bad partner? Um, I mean, it depends. I think because if you were a bad partner while you were there, then she's probably relieved that you're gone. Um, but you know, it's all about it's all about context. I um, I'm also like a very bad partner to her, but um, I find giving her a bottle of wine every morning has really uh, made her love me. Um, and just keeping her inebriated in general. Um, but yeah, yeah I, think what, you what give, I think you can be apart for three years and still be together and be fine. Yeah, I mean, you did that in real life, didn't you? Ouch. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. I know he can hear because you're not wearing headphones. <laughs> mm. uh, he's playing StarCraft. He doesn't care about the show. Um, and who does, really? <laughs> On that note... Josh, you want to come on out and uh, tell us about your starter wife? Well, I was looking at what coupons to steal off of your uh, pin board there, but I didn't find any good ones. So uh, when it comes to Stardew Valley... <laughs> could be. I feel like I, last time I saw you, you were in a similar state of inebriation as Shane was in the game when he was about to roll off that cliff. That's fair. Um, That's very fair. But the moral <laughs> of the story is that as someone who does not believe in crystals, healing, and all that hippie bullshit, the natural choice is still Emily. Because mm -hmm. it's blue hair. It's the blue yeah, hair we, for you, right? Is it because she gives you like anime main character vibes? Uh, no, she works at a bar, and I feel like that's, like, the other thing. It's, like, <laughs> it's, like, one of those, um, like, mid-2010s romantic comedies where you find that quirky girl, and she works at a bar, but, you know, she's got aspirations of being an artist or some sort of cliche plot like that, you know? Would you say that Emily is your manic pixie dream girl? 
<laughs> I'm not going to say that, but I'm not going to go ahead either. Uh-huh. Oh. Mm. I read something today about how the boy version of Manic Pixie Dream Girl is like, oh, God, depressed goblin line cook. Yeah. Felt very on point. Yeah. No, I I, I have a few friends that I think that would uh, that would agree with that one. Mm-hmm. I've known a few depressed line cooks in my day. <clears throat> Did you have a runner up for your stardy wife? Um, I did. I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and? so Emily has a sister. Haley. <laughs> yeah. She's a hottie with a body. I get it. Yeah. Right. That, that was completely shallow for me. It was just like, well, that's, that's nice. <laughs> I'm sure you have a great she... personality. Yeah. She doesn't. She's awful. I immediately was turned off by Haley. As soon as I <laughs> talked to her, ter- I was like... She's a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really enamored by the pixelation of my camera here. I feel like this is how I'm going to get people to think I'm a Stardew Valley character and start marrying me. One can hope. Which Stardew just... character do you did you most associate with and that you would you thought was more like most like you? Kelly, if you were a starting character. Uh, man, like, you know how long I've been since I played this game? This is like the most cruel pop quiz. Like, <laughs> I'm the, like, quirky guy with the artisanal mustache. Mm. Or is that all? No, I know 20. Harvey? Was that his name? That was the doctor. I, th- I was, uh, yeah, maybe Elliot. He lives in a shack on the beach by himself. And he hates everything that you give him. Might have been Clint. <laughs> Oh yeah, he was also a grumpy bastard, so. <laughs> Thank you to our producer for that. All right, so I have completely exhausted the limit of my Stardew Valley knowledge. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a long time since we've done this. And I've completely forgotten how the show works. I've completely forgotten what jokes are. So here's what I think we should do. Uh, I think we should bring out our guest. And uh, yeah, we'll, I, he's, he's, if we leave him under the table any longer, he's going to be in some extreme pain. So I'm, I'm going to cast a, a vote here for, for bringing him out and uh, getting him to like invigorate us with some fresh blood here. That's probably a good idea. He can probably give us some tips on how to get that blood flowing as well. So, Quick question before we bring him out. Does he play Stardew? And if he doesn't, can we just not bring him out? <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to speculate here. Um, I'm going to guess that he does not play Stardew um, because it, it's a game that has charm and like it's wholesome. And mm-hmm. I think he's more of a player of games that are like really kind of like gray and bleak and just involve a lot of. I don't think he's played a game that doesn't have a gun in it, to be honest. To be fair, guns are cool. But the only way to find out, in my opinion, is to play the guest intro music and see what happens. explain who you are what you do which is how is it even possible to get down on a floor and get back up without just like having to lie down for six hours after just to kind of like loosen your back up again how do you avoid your body just cracking when you get up from a position that you sat in for too long oh wow i mean frankly like a large portion of it is just luck you know <laughs> like <laughs> how am i gonna do today uh, well i feel like you're segueing me into saying like some sort of physical conditioning regimen might be something one could do to are potentially... you on physical conditioning um, i dabble i don't i dabble you dabble in physical yeah. conditioning, I dabble in physical conditioning. <laughs> yeah so. well this is the big reveal which is so some context for you in 
some past experiences on the show, some of us, not going to name names, uh, may have gone hard Stuck. on big fucking nerds, um, of which we've established I am one of them. But, you know, it's like, it's like people who are like, like race traders, you know, you're, you're, the, you're ashamed to be what you are and you just absolutely throw your own people to the wolves. Okay. And I've done that with the big nerds. You've thrown your fellow compatriots under the bus. That's right. Oh, okay. So you're on notice nerds because the jocks are now in the room. There's oh, supposed yeah. to be two of them. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into that because so you, Ian. Yes, that's my name. Yeah. name we've not said. Yeah, yet. I was gonna, I was gonna say that for myself, but thank you for <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> so you co-own your your independent business, your local business, mm -hmm. with your partner. Yep, that's right. Yeah, me and Sam own uh, Spiraling Upward Fitness, mm -hmm. and uh, we turned our home into kind of like a private studio right. where we could train people. Um, big motivation for that was obviously the the good old pandy there. So we. The gyms are open and closed like constantly, as I'm sure everyone knows, right? And uh, it was kind of like an alternative strategy for to obviously keep working and making money, but also keeping people training. Because mm -hmm. uh, probably the past few years have been the absolute worst in history for people's general well being and fitness levels, kind of thing. Because I mean, there's an uncertainty yeah. whether you can go to the gym or whatever. Worst and... in history? Sorry? Worst in history? Worst in history, yeah, recorded, recorded history. Man, yeah. I was I used to read it history books be. and be like, I'm so it's glad I didn't grow up during like the Black Death. But like, I guess as long as they were swole, they were having a good time. Right? Yeah, I mean, oh, their yeah. bellies were swollen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, their organs were swollen. Wow, it uh, really is hard for us in the future. I really like to imagine like a Renaissance painting of like people with the Black Death, but just, just fucking like, just so yoked. Yeah, and just, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just like a. a uh, like a Quite Greek a for sort you. of aesthetic. Where... Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're just super, super well, ripped. I so... mean, if you like strategically placed pustules, they will look like muscles, right? <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Eventually. Um, so the thing about the pandemic is that I felt like I was sent a message from a higher power because um, the, the pandemic really started kicking off in like February, January, February kind of area of what, mm -hmm. 2019 now? God, it's been so funny. 2020. Yeah, no. Yes, 2020. Um, and uh, so I got a gym membership in January because I was like, I've been drinking too much and I need to actually start like <laughs> reproportioning my body a little bit. Redistributing the yeah. mass. Yeah, it, moving like, it yeah. around a yeah, little bit. Shuffle it around. Like, and so I went a couple times and I was like, wow, this fucking hurts and <laughs> I don't like it very much, but I need to do it. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, well... Yeah, uh, now I don't have to do it anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, man, yeah. That's like a lot of a lot of people viewed it in that way too. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Ah, well, well, the gyms are closed. It's closed. It's closed. Yeah. What am I going to do? I can't, I can't, <laughs> can't home. I can't work at work out at home. Yeah. I, I I have beer there. That'd be weird. Yeah, what if my children see me? <laughs> <laughs> don't want them getting the wrong idea. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like there's definitely no gym equipment in my house. Um, there's nothing I could do <laughs> to like help my well being there. It's you know. It's yeah. it's a completely hopeless situation. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, like, I mean, there's there's no real in between between absolutely keeping yourself at the peak of function and just like losing yourself in Rimworld or or Stardew Valley for for eight hours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I still, every time you talk about Rimworld, I just can't. I know, I know. <laughs> it's a game. I think of the same thing you think of. I'm pretty sure. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fair um, but yeah no i guess uh that was definitely something that was like a little upsetting about this entire pandemic thing it was like i was finally gonna do it but then i was like well if i really oh, wanted I to do it i wouldn't i, I would have just done it at home yeah because now i have a gym in my apartment building and i'm like still still kind of i should probably go down there at some point yeah <laughs> yeah i know well it was like we started i, I started training like about a year before pandemic hit yeah and I was just that's, starting... that's when you started working out first time ever. Yeah, first time. Yeah. And like ever since then, it's just been great. And I, uh, I'll, I'll start with that one. Uh, and I was like an external trainer at the Kinsman. Oh, okay. I was training people there. And then like once I got started with that, it was like two months and then pandemic, gyms closed, blah, blah, blah. And then for the longest time, uh, 
the Kinsmen wouldn't even allow external trainers to come in. Like they just had the city of Edmonton trainers come in. Yeah. So we were on like, they we were just like, oh, wait, wait, wait. But all of our clients from there, man, they're like, what do we do? What the fuck? <laughs> and like, like, and I'm like, in about a month, we should be able to go. Cause like we, you'd get like yeah, exactly. a notice or whatever. And then, yeah, but it never, never really happened. I think there's like a month or whatever. And then it's shut down again. And yeah, then, it was ridiculous. So it left a lot of people like stranded, especially like if you're, yeah, just like you, right? you're just getting started. Yeah. And then like another obstacle kind of put itself in your way. Which makes it really easy to just say like, to hell with it. Yeah. yeah. Plus like, we didn't see anyone. So like no one would even know. It's like, I'm just going to get, you know, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm totally. just, yeah, I'm just going to destroy my body <laughs> yeah. with drugs and alcohol. Exactly. Next, yeah. Yeah. So like two years. Yeah. So it's really hard to keep people accountable and like engaged yes. with it because yeah. And there's only so much you can do over zoom as well. Mm -hmm. Like, especially for like training, it's like, uh, like pretty like technical when I'm working with people like about body movements and stuff like that. And it's just like, I don't know if someone has like this like camera. A, yeah. Like a, <laughs> a like, Kelly webcam, a Kelly webcam or whatever. It's like, okay, your squats look amazing. Cause you're literally teleporting from one position <laughs> to the next. Uh, so yeah, like you, I mean, you put someone on the cam like this and you're like, I don't know in what kind of shape you're in <laughs> and you have to assume they're doing great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or right. that they're like a digital AI or something. Like that. <laughs> they just want to get yoked. Yeah. So they're ready for the singularity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it sounds like this whole like endeavor was a pretty collaborative effort, right? Between me and Sam? Yep. Yeah. 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 I started training in like a LA fit. Right. That's the first job I had. And it was just terrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. I had zero control over like how I trained people and like how much I got paid was like, it was, man, it's really bad. Um, uh, some other gyms are probably better, but at LA fit, they, uh, were paying the trainers for half hour sessions, $7 and 50 cents. Oh, Jesus. Yes. So if yeah. you had two back to back, you could make the minimum wage. Oh, lovely. Yeah. If, if you did that. So like you're making like no money Yeah. and, uh, I found like the, the whole like sales side of the the team there was just very, very intentionally deceiving to people about like what they're getting, what they're paying for. Yeah. And then like, as a trainer started like training them on the floor and they're like, what, what do you mean? The session is only half an hour. I'm like, yep. And they're like, I thought it was an hour. And it's like, nope, it's, no. they're all half an hour. And he's like, well, what the heck? They cost like $90. Yeah. You're like, dude, I yeah. know. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, dude, I know. I know. And like, I found like a lot of their business to be like really slimy and un unethical. This, so this session like, sponsored like, yeah. by LA Fitness. Yeah, fuck this. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that place. So they uh, so they were charging the customers ninety dollars an hour, and you were getting seven fifty. I'm not too sure. Uh, it was oh. like for a package of like ten. I actually didn't even really know what the prices were um, because like they'll they'll just change them when they're doing like a consultation with a, someone. They'll come in. I was like, oh, we really want you to come. And it's like, no, oh, I can't really do eighty bucks per session. They're like, oh, let me see what I can do. And he like. Just like on his keyboard, he's like, ah, oh, okay, we can bring it down to the, so I, I actually don't even know. Uh, but it was in that range, like 60 to $90 per session for per half hour session. And like, yeah. And we, yeah. And we got $7 and 50 cents of that. So cute. So yeah, very, it's adorable. And, um, so then, uh, tactics, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, it was like. I just external training at the Kinsman. So I had like a framework for how I can do business. I can like, I, I make the terms. And then, uh, when the Kinsman closed down, I was like me and Sam, so that's my partner and co-owner. Mm -hmm. We're just like, we don't want to stop training, especially people who are like making progress. Like they'd never been working out before. And it's like, yeah, I'm finally like doing it. And we're like, yeah. And like, it's really sad to see like people make progress and then just like it goes away. Right. And that happened like five or six times this year because even we got shut down. Um, and then, so we were like, fuck it. Like, we'll just convert the entire basement into like a gym studio and we'll train people here and that'll be that kind of thing. So yeah, that was kind of like the inspiration. For yeah. There's really any hiccups in converting your basement into some kind of studio, right? Like it's just, you just do it, right? Smooth sailing. <laughs> yeah, man. Totally. Roommates yeah. won't say anything. It's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Well, I'm curious kind of like how you see the, the kind of distribution of roles in that like, you know, you're putting in 50% of the work each maybe, but it looks like you're getting 100% of the on-screen credit. Yeah, oh yeah, so I yeah. I did a little research and if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> 100% of your media appearances have been you speaking for the company. Yeah, oh yeah, that's absolutely The man right. of, the, of the business and the relationship. <laughs> that's right, yeah, the face and most good. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. can go ahead and expand on that. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, Kelly, <laughs> by saying the exact opposite is kind of implied exactly what's going on, but mm. Sam, ha Sam uh, does lots of the social networking, social media kind of like stuff. So she actually has really, really awesome posts. So you should check it out. Um, and uh, I, uh, I do <laughs> none of it, none of it, because <laughs> I, I have a weird thing with social media. I don't really like it. Hey, fair enough. So it's poison. It, it is poison. I, I, I truly believe that. But that, like, it, uh, it's not inherently poison, but it's like yeah. used yeah. for poisonous, like for, oh, for boy, poison. Is it. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like, yeah, like you know. There's the internet is a deep dark place, but people can do good things on it. So Sam is definitely doing good things on it. But. So was it more of a situation where you were actually arguing about who didn't have to come here and you lost because you weren't putting enough of the media time in? Uh, no, Sam just wanted to work out. <laughs> just wanted to work out. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck is wrong with you people? That <laughs> was fair. Yeah. I guess. I, well, I asked her this morning if she wanted to come. And she was like, yeah, totally. And then we got busy and she was like, uh, no, I actually won't work out. I, th I think it was actually the moment where I gave her the character sheet. I'm like, here you go. It's time to make a character for tonight. She's like, uh, you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to go work out and be cool work out instead. instead of playing D&D. &D. I was like, that's rude. There we go. Now we know. Stuff. That's the moment where our guests drop out is as soon as they find out they have to make a character. Yeah. Uh, like, don't oh, worry. That doesn't, that doesn't rip my heart out or anything. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm actually not offended at all. Our, our jocks are jocks are incredibly cruel people. That's okay. Well, I... yeah. I mean, that could be a good learning point for us because we've done a lot of the the tabletop role playing part of that equation, but not a lot of the being cool part of that. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe don't like know, maybe you it... can kind of do some some personal training on that right now. Like, can you coach us into being like less of embarrassing shit stains? <laughs> Like, how do I, we go from being... But I like you guys that way. ...to the bullies? Because I know you know how to do this. Oh, yeah, I can I can, if, I can, can switch. I'm going to switch like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we're not embarrassing shit stains, whose lunch money is he going to steal? This is true. That's right. Uh, There's a hierarchy for a reason. I don't know. I don't think any of you guys have extra cash to throw around. I, <laughs> I, feel bad. I feel bad if I robbed someone who had less money than me <laughs> in their pocket right now. <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of like that, uh, that meme where it's like yeah, a, yeah. a robber shaking you awake. It's like, damn, bitch, you live like this? <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. He's yeah. like, give me all your money. It's like, this is all I got. This is all you have? That's all. You should have some savings, man. Like, you should take care of yourself. Here, take take this. Yeah. 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 Try to open the RSP. Yeah. I got I you this card. Is. It's for a financial advisor. Make the call. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Just this is this is no way to live. So, I forgot what the initial question was. But... Uh, you know, I think it was more of a really lame attempt at a at, at a gotcha because I did want to call you out for being a bully, but I did also want advice on how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really need that lunch money, man. Well, I mean, well, I've been seeing some of these some of these nerds out there, and they're getting uppity. You know, like the yeah, and they're getting more popular too. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, it's every problem. time I try to go to a movie, you know. All this nerd stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, I know. It's becoming mainstream, and I, I liked it better when it was uncool to be a nerd because I felt very at home in it. You know, like oh, it, right. it really and allowed now... me to feed into my self-hating complexes. Right. And when all of a sudden we have a lot of acceptance, right, around you know, around being into weird things or being into things that like are a little, you know, are a little silly. You know, people are running around fighting crime in their pajamas, like what like i'm having to go to increasing lengths to continue these like toxic internal narratives about why i suck right mm -hmm. this is this is my problem with it sounds like you were also being a weeb i think it's been working out for josh 
Yeah, it's working great for me. I get to, <laughs> not only do I get to, not only do I get to, type of nerd. I get to, I get to hate myself and I get to hate Marvel. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like a win-win situation. Oh, yeah, everyone loves that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, Nicole, I didn't say I want to be a pervert. <laughs> I just am one. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, some are, you know, some are born perverted, some achieve perversion, some have perversion thrust upon them. <laughs> and boy, have I had a lot of perversion thrust upon me recently. By whom? I mean, by yourself. Mostly, yourself doesn't count. Mostly Josh. I That's mean, oh, okay, yeah. You know, when it's not here's the latest anime you should be watching it's here's my extremely troubling mug that i went and got custom made <laughs> i spent so much money on this how much was the mug i think with shipping it was almost 40 dollars. like what's really disconcerting I mean... about this mug is that you set it down in front of me um so that i can just think about <laughs> what it implies about him but he's not drinking anything out of it no it's just yeah you prop. oh so it's gonna be like a it's like a holographic charizard it's <laughs> like it's yeah. never gonna be used no no it's my the only mug in my house everywhere. all i have <laughs> i had to, i made tea the other day and realized i didn't have a mug and i had to use a mason jar oh fuck yeah yeah <laughs> i mean well actually it's not the only mug in your house it's there's still no mugs in your house there's still there's still the mugs in Kelly's house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got to bring that everywhere. He doesn't have friends over to his house because of the pandemic. So he's got to bring it with him everywhere yeah, he goes. Right. So everyone can yeah. see the mug he just how made. How poisoned my mind is that I'm like, this will be hilarious. And, and that you own a mug. And then I also have to yeah. explain the joke to literally every person I show it to. So. And for anyone watching, yeah, do you want to, do you want to, see be able to read Josh's mug, all okay, you have I'll... to do is start supporting us by, oh, oh there no, you, you can read it. Yeah, there it is, yeah. right there. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> Ladies in the audience. Well, now I, I prioritize have, fishing. Now I have no <laughs> way of pitching to people that they should give us money so we can pay for HD streaming and streaming art. I was about to say, just, uh, oh, just right. join the Discord for more of my incredibly hot takes and monologues <laughs> that you won't see here. Mm -hmm. We got a spicy mug at this point. Mm -hmm. And Paige will just throw a link to the Discord right in the bottom of the screen. We can move on. Uh, Nicole, did you have any questions for Bria? Um, yeah, actually, I was wondering... So I'm assuming you have lots of like before and after pictures of like people that are like going through your training programs. Um, nope. Do you, I, I was wondering, so we're looking for ways to fundraise for the show, obviously. Would you be yeah. willing to donate that as like part of the content that we could like give people if they sponsor our show? Like this little secret hidden, like half naked people in varying degrees of their like success story? Or... <laughs> uh, actually, I don't really have any of them. Um, Most of the photos I he don't... takes when training clients are of like the obscure variety, if I recall. So. Man, <laughs> <laughs> the up short <laughs> variety. <laughs> Rude. Uh, no, uh, no, I don't know. We like uh, one thing that I personally suck at is marketing. Um, I have to get better at it. I know, it. but I don't know. Um, trying to do this business kind of on my terms. Uh, which I don't know, like, I don't, I don't really like coercing people into training. I've seen, saw a lot of that at the gyms. I don't like, um, uh, I really don't, I don't actually usually sign contracts with people unless they want one for their own protection. Cause I don't want to like keep them or anything like that. And, uh, I generally tell people like not to weigh themselves and not to like really take pictures or anything like that. Um, and just to go by like purely subjective metrics, like. How, how do you look when you look at yourself? How do you feel, you know? So more of like a positivity thing than like, yeah. obviously like results are part of the factor, but it's more of like, look, when someone's happy, that's when they're achieving the results you're yeah. more interested in. Yeah, like I think of like a state of like uh, health, strength, well-being, functionality. It's like, it's it's experienced subjectively, you know? It's not like, um, uh, like someone might look at you and be like, hey, you look great. And you're like, oh, well, thanks. I've been working on it, right? Mm -hmm. But like the, uh, uh, how, how you feel like, um, like getting stuck under a table and mm -hmm. stuff like that, or being able to do the things that you love to do with like no impotence or like a challenge is like thrown at you and you can just like do it because like, you know, you're, you're strong and you feel well, your joints don't hurt. Um, your injury is Wait, better. Joints cannot hurt. It's, yeah, it's totally possible. <laughs> can, you, can you expand on that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like the opposite, you know, when joints hurt. Yeah. It's like that stops and it's like the opposite. It's like it feels like when you're asleep. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like that. You know how you feel no pain when you're asleep? Well, okay, so you're saying that, like, it's like when I'm asleep at all the time. So, like, my whole yeah. life will just be, like, a 24-hour stream of, like, extremely anxious dreams where I fail a lot? <laughs> yeah, and that's, like... I mean, that is our capitalist that, hellscape. Yeah, yes. yeah, I mean, like, that's just, like, being awake, man. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's interesting. That's an interesting take on, like... I Because I, I, I agree. I think that that's what fitness should be about. But I'm just, like... And I know there's, like... I'm sure there's, like, some sort of, like transition point in your life or something but like i'm just picturing like you as a high school bully but also being body positive like uh, how how did that work no, how... no no definitely those were not by the way man you're valid <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're a piece of shit let me show you how to work out a little bit make you feel a little better about yourself yeah you like that yeah huh <laughs> And it, it was junior high, actually. That's when I was bullied. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like we're all bullies at one point in our point in our lives. Even if you are the bully, you become a bully. No, oh, that, that was yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. It, it zero all friends in yeah. elementary. Got pop like switch schools. Got popular in junior high. You go, yes. you go, just yes. explodes. Yeah. yeah, you're like, yeah. I am ready. I am to, God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I am ready to subject people to the worst pain of their life. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> and then, um, and then in high school, I stopped being a bully. And that's a pretty good transistor like, like transistory period though because like most people like pretty good transistor period shut up yeah <laughs> words are hard and i'm already three beers deep uh <laughs> this tabletop is gonna go great oh i'm excited um, I love dms they're great uh because i know that like a lot of people start as bullies as a child and just uh never develop so really you're you're ahead of the curve now yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> i think so i don't know it was good though it was like honestly the the thing that uh, helped a lot was uh, just like doing drugs in high school. That helped. There we go. <laughs> like, that, uh, do drugs like, in high school. Yeah. Official uh, stance. Uh, 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 drugs uh, are a good thing. Uh, I don't know. That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, uh, Every time I try to go and do drugs in a high school, they're like, "Who are you? Wait, wait, <laughs> name tag. Like, are you, you? You don't look like the right age unless you're. They, they, sometimes I can convince them that I'm a PE yeah. teacher. Um, a trench coat is very unbecoming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like right? things like that. It's, it's so much hassle to do drugs in a high school. Like, um, personally, I, I find it's much easier to kind of just like do drugs within view of a high school. Um, as long yeah, as I mean, we all gotta, um, you know, <laughs> compromise on our dreams yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, it's, mm. it's all good. But it, it was it was just uh, smoking weed, smoking no. weed. Like, I Fair like enough. it like. It, it totally had a, like a uh, like a sedating effect on me, and it still does. Yes, it's like I know some people can do it and be like, "All right, here we go. I'm gonna clean my room and make makes me make music or do other stuff." For me, I'm just like, I'm gonna just veg for a little yeah, while. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but it like just gave me a chance to like slow down, stop, and think, and just be like, "Yo, man, I should like, stop being a dick. <laughs> should I stop being a dick? <laughs> like, I'm I'm entertaining the possibility of doing that. <laughs> That's fair." Like so the way to stop weed. people from being kids from being bullies is to totally incapacitate them with weed is what you're saying yeah well ko the bullies yeah just yeah. Yeah. Them. yeah i'm into All it right. i think we have some uh policy recommendations for our government now yeah you mm -hmm. everyone quote me on that <laughs> so, yeah, the children with drugs. <laughs> so what i'm getting at so far i want to get fit like first off it's going to involve beer and pizza I know, right? This is a great environment for me to be like, yeah, you just be healthy. <laughs> yeah, and take a lot of sedatives. Yeah. <laughs> well, because when you think about it, if you're if you're really sedentary, yeah, then you're not burning as many calories, so you don't eat as much, so you won't get fat. Uh, you know, you just kind of maintain this steady state of just like the neutral, neutral moving, calories in yeah. neutral out yeah the just, more yeah. you start moving the more you have to start doing calculus on how to like eat enough to balance it out because no one wants to starve to death yeah right yeah that's i I'm mean you. then you, then you could be all over the place but if you're just kind of mostly a puddle like you can get very you can get really predictable in your routines and just kind of like subsist on like water apples and dextrogen right yeah i'm very like interested in like what body of literature is like what, what is the the root uh philosophy from where, where did this come from um mostly whatever is most convenient for me for me <laughs> yeah. yeah so 
it's there, there yeah there's a bit of uh of survivor bias there but i've found nothing more <laughs> effective than just checking out from reality for as long of periods as possible and kind of just forgetting to eat and you know i i mean look look at this temple <laughs> yeah so but it's like one of those temples in thailand where like the monkeys are running around and like shitting all over the place start on those fucking monkeys. <laughs> uh look one of them i don't know if there's a cigarette a, it's really funny sorry so one of them smokes a cigarette and it's really funny <laughs> oh look at him nice he's like squatting like a slob exactly <laughs> my people yeah <laughs> nice bro yeah but they also like raided my i mean these weren't thai monkeys these were malaysian monkeys it might be a whole different like monkey culture but all they did was like raid up my like bike and they chewed up the seat and they stole oh, yeah. my water bottle and you know they took away my trans swim trunks. <laughs> nice. Like, oh. And you're like naked in the ocean and yeah. you had to like go so, back to the classic water. prank. Monkeys, <laughs> monkeys nice, bro. Have- <laughs> <laughs> monkeys have watched enough like eighties college comedies that they're yeah, like, they're This is there. hilarious. <laughs> we'll steal their clothes when they're in the water. See you at prom nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Now they have to walk home naked. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that's the problem with me trying to integrate monkeys into my fitness journey is that I've still just ended up as the recipient of bullying. So it's I'm falling into those same old patterns. This is why I'm trying to break the pattern by figuring out, like, if I can't bully, my, like, who can I bully? This is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, I don't know. I, I think probably jocks. Jocks. Like yeah. coming up it's yeah. about their turn i think it's I about think. their co-optance yeah it's like now that everyone's getting into like stuff like marvel and star wars now like you could just yeah yeah be shitty to jocks now yeah like they're like oh you like star wars you're like you yeah don't? like everyone <laughs> yeah god what's with you yeah or or yeah it's like they like but jocks can be nerds too i guess but i i, I know what you mean yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if i'm trying to bully people in order to get fit and then oh, I as in, oh. <laughs> yeah, is that how you get fit? Because my fitness yeah. journey so far yeah, it's called is fit. drugs, alcohol, and pizza. Which, like, I feel like there has to be a little exercise. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's I'm having a beer right now. I had some pizza too. Right. I'm not like a keto person who's just like you know, you know keto is the most unscientific yeah. diet in the entire world. Don't do it. But. um but th- there could be a reason why you would want to do it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's just like, I, I don't want my life completely dominated by like fitness. It's definitely a component component of like what I do and who I am. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's still room for beer and like pizza and stuff like that. As long as it's like, you know, well balanced. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because like taking pizza and beer out of your life, it's like, great. I was barely happy already and now you <laughs> took away pizza and beer what the fuck man so yeah so you, you said that keto is the most unscientific diet you can take how do you feel about the carnivore diet oh well that's <laughs> completely backed by science and uh, uh, i mean a, a doctor does it guys yeah yeah he's, he's the godfather of logic you can't you can't a doctor's a psychologist's daughter did it so that's right we should note that uh, you should probably just not eat meat all the time. You might die. Yeah, just or, or become addicted to benzos. Please don't. There should be like a connection here. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You're stuffing the, the benzos in the steak. Good. See, this is why I've never been good at working out. Is it's like, oh, well, the weed's good, but the benzos are bad. Like it's so confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what do I, I do? Know, what I do I like... not? I feel like that might be the benzos. <laughs> <laughs> And then that answers the question. Like, oh yeah, I already did the benzos. Yeah. Pizza time. Yeah, like <laughs> I guess I should get a fitness journal and log when I've done the benzos, and maybe it'd be easier to kind of track my progress or my regress. Yeah, and like the days too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally. Uh, See, these are the yeah. things I can never figure out my own. Oh man, right? that thing is wild. I'm actually. I, I read today. It's such a crazy know, thing. With headlines and science oh. studies, you should always take this with a grain of salt. But they're like, intermittent fasting might not be all that it's meant to be. And I didn't know it was really a thing to begin with. I just am lazy <laughs> and only yeah. eat once a day because it's cheap and I only get hungry once a day. Yeah. They're like, it's, uh, it could be you're losing weight at the same rate as someone who eats normally. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like intermittent fasting because I'm the same way. I only yeah. get really, I only really get hungry once a day and it's like in the evening. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, uh, I have an appetite problem, but like, 
I was just like, I was doing it all like my entire life. I just didn't know. Yeah, just, you didn't like, have a term for it. I yeah. just thought it was forgetting to eat. Yeah, to not having aspiration of my friends. Yeah, not having enough money to buy food. God, yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> for a while. If I buy less food, I'm intermittent fasting. Not I can buy more beer in university. <laughs> yes. Nope. Hey, yeah. yeah. Red, I saw a meme once that was like, only a millennials would turn, would be able to, or millennials are amazing, only they would be able to turn skipping breakfast into intermittent fasting yeah, and totally. like make it like a fitness wellness thing rather than like yeah. just a, hey, you're I shitty and you woke up too late to make anything. Yeah. <laughs> so how is this is like a really hacky kind of maybe like 90s stand up joke. Yeah, only get hungry once a day, you know, roughly the time between uh, when I wake up and when I go to sleep. Yeah, it's like yeah, a joke boat yeah. level thing from Jackbox. Like, where you're just like, please. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, the worst totally. game of Jackbox. Please never play this again. I mean, people love Jackbox. I, I do love Jackbox. They, oh, I love Jackbox. They have so much cringe in it sometimes, though. So. I don't like joke. Oh, no, their newest game has created a special brand of horrible with me and my friends. Like, oh, yeah. Like, where I feel like the FBI might be get called one of these which, days. Which one is that? Uh, it's called Job Job, and you... That is incorrect take. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you, you all get prompts and you just word vomit out there and yeah. they take this word vomit, mix it all up, and then everyone gets a mixture of this and ask you new questions. Okay, yeah. yeah so it's like, like a king's cup of word vomit? It basically, so it'll be yes. like, you'll get a question of like, what is your opinion on oh, God. giving yeah, your just, friends laxatives? Yeah, yeah. And you just fucking just... Mm, nail it up like a random coherent incoherent sentence yeah and then they mix it up make it less coherent than even that are you trying like jumble it yeah they they all jumble it together and then someone will get a question of just like um in the office frank keeps stealing your food what do you do about it and you'll get mixes of like three different people's sentences yeah and they try to make a sentence out of that and it gets very weird very 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 fast fast. yes nice (laughs) i do love yeah no just Taking Jackbox is like a very like wholesome like hey, yeah, yeah. And just in, in, injecting foul like yeah. terribleness into injecting it. adults into it, which yeah, is yeah, the worst thing yeah. you can do. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I love Jackbox. I mean, I would never. I always play it straight. You played straight. Yeah, profanity I, I, filter I don't on. Even going blue comedically, I'm always shooting for the top shelf. Yeah, no. I, is there a yeah. stage below blue collar comedy? Is uh, that what going blue means? I would assume so. I mean, it all depends where you come from, too. Like, going blue in the States would be, like, Democrat? Yeah, I feel like it has different origins, but I've never looked into it. I mean, I always thought it was white-collar and blue-collar, just, like, crime. Whereas white-collar crime is the stuff that is super lame and you should never do. And blue-collar crime is super fun. Mm. Like, like insurance. Like, like not paying your insurance for, like, six months and hoping you still have it. Or blowing up a refrigerator with tannerite or something like that, you know. Yeah, those are all. Is that a crime? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I expect that blowing explosives up in your yard is probably illegal somewhere. But is it a crime? I mean, most <laughs> crimes are just imposed on us by the states. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, for one, think that everyone should be able to blow up tannerite in their backyards. Yeah. As I long as like, it's yeah. in your backyard. Yeah. Like, you can't fuck up your neighbor's yards or fence, but if you want to fuck up your own yard, man, that's your shit. Yeah. Yeah. And My specifically, when I, I agree. I agree, but when I say yard, I mean, like, farm yard. I don't mean, oh, like, yeah. I live in the city, and I, there's, like, a picket fence on either side, and I, like, blow shit up in between. I feel like that gets a little dicey, but I agree. And as long as explosions contain to your front saying, yeah, yard. I'm just saying, as long as you, you pay just have to do yard. a little, little one. Just a that's little fair. Toy. Those little what cap gun explosives. To me is that <laughs> as the the basement renter, I don't get access to the backyard, and like, where do I get to blow shit up? Well, this is why private property is theft. So you're kind of because <laughs> I can't pitching, blow like, up shit. Because I can't blow up my neighbor's yard. yard. I can't yeah. blow. So yes, like really I love more it. public spaces in which to blow shit. I feel like I just recruited oh, yeah. a lot of communists if they get a hold of that clip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can blow up tannery to my neighbor's yard if we just reclaim all land nice i mean i feel like there's room to have our own yard but you know to back on to like you know it's like a dog park where you say okay this is the area that's off leash for everyone and, and then like, here's the tannerite area yeah yeah well, hopefully not next week i was gonna say it should <laughs> yeah. be like an enclave like it should be in the middle of the dog park you know oh so like the dogs can watch well yeah yeah 
I well, mean, dogs love explosions. If there's one thing, yeah, let's say, if there's anything that the New York, or the New York, the uh, New Year's fireworks show is telling me, it's that pets love fireworks. Oh, yeah, they love it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, I have to walk my dog, and I have to blow up a fridge. Like, oh, two it's, birds, it's one stone. Day. Yeah, because, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, like, if, if I don't blow up a fridge twice a day, I'm shitting on the floor. Right, it's it's very much like the dog situation. It's the yeah. only thing that controls my IBS. <laughs> going up refrigerators in the right. dog park, or even just something like broadly cold will kind of tide me over when we're short on fridges. That's fair, like like a yeah. wine cooler or something like yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I feel like is still a fridge, but just has a different label. Yeah, yeah, just like a, yeah, you're, like hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we yeah, solved that, right? so we do. We sh- we should get back to the workout questions. Yes. While you do that, I'm gonna go grab yeah, some more beer. grains. <laughs> Healthy part of the yeah, yeah exactly. the food so, pyramid. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I had nutrition explained to me in first grade, and I've never really needed to know since. I just remember lots of grains, yeah, lots of know, three right? other things. Dairy. Mm-hmm. So much fucking dairy in that yeah. that pyramid. Check. I'm looking yeah. at this pizza. <laughs> we got the veggies. There's no meat. Mine, you know. No meat, yeah. But uh, like, because I, I don't know what your relationship to all of your clients is, but I can extrapolate based... Strict, strictly sexual. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, because I'm... Well, I, 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 can I, only, I can only extrapolate based on the workout experiences I've had with you and then think, okay, what is it like to do that, you know, full time for your living? So my question in terms of your interaction with your clients is like, how do you, how do you kind of manage the kind of near constant whining and putting <laughs> off of doing the next set? Uh, <laughs> that is true. That is what it's like to train with you. But um, yeah. uh, I don't, I'm just man, I've, respect, got, like, you know? I've got such a positive relationship with all my clients. Like they're all my friends, like especially over the past year, I've seen them more than my actual friends. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. We have a great really like. I don't know. I really try and entice people with like excitement and fun and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, some would say that this is like a a thing you have to drag yourself through and like, uh, it's a like generally unpleasant and uncomfortable or whatever. Yeah. Um. I I personally I love it, but like, um, the the camaraderie of like having a trainer and like having this like friendship. Like for me, I would say they they are my friends. Uh, it it does like make them excited to be there and like do the things and stuff like that. And like when I get excited for them, like they get excited for themselves. You know, because we have like a close ish type of relationship. Mm-hmm. So and... at the point where a client becomes your friend, is that they essentially mean like you kind of stop answering your phone, you stop responding, <laughs> to text. like you just kind of generally check yeah. out and. Like, does that kind of, is it sort of like a self-limiting relationship in that way? It's like, well, you know, now this person is just like time, on the back. Time to, time to ghost I, them. Yeah. The client is now my friend, which means I see them less of my clients. Now I have time. And I can be client. rude to them and like, you know. I think the important lesson to be learned here is how do you get your friends to pay you to hang out with them? Become a and it's totally it, Yeah, yeah. It's exactly it, yeah. Cracked and like, probably you should write a book on this. Because that, that was like essentially my entire young adult life it was just like working out with my friends and now i've monetized that and hey why not right well what's that uh term uh if you do what you love you'll never work a day in your life yeah man i, I really do feel that way when i'm like training people it's like i was like oh i get it yeah, yeah it's, it makes like, sense it's actually now. fun yeah mm-hmm. so but so, i only only because i'm doing it for myself yeah, that's well. the biggest biggest thing too it's like uh it was not fun when I was doing it at LA Fit because I was like, I am getting fucked. Like, yeah, it is, everyone, everyone's getting fucked here. Everyone's getting fucked here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah except for well, like, like you said, it was an inherently sexual relationship. <laughs> yeah, 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 what yeah changed exactly. is my question. Yeah. <laughs> I became more selfish. I was doing it for myself, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it feels like as a, as a personal trainer, you kind of have the same relationship that you would. Um, like if your clients were like if you were a counselor and your clients were like your counseling clients, Dude, except for you yeah. don't have to like have all those boundaries in place. You can just like go as far as you want with like being their friend and like getting into their personal lives and like Yeah, man. I was gonna say great. like 
part of this job is to- I'm totally a fucking counselor to some of these people, which I'm not qualified to do at all. But like, uh, like people, they like on on the first day of training, just be like chatting, working out, and just like, yeah, man, like my uh, like fucking yeah. kid is like doing all this weird shit, and I like I don't like my kid. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, holy, and like, uh, it's, I, I think it's also because like I like I don't know them, and like I don't know anyone they know, and like they'll just like tell me everything and i'm just like what? whoa crazy fuck. i think i think fitness coaches are up there with like like my mom's a hairdresser my sister's a hairdresser and i know about yes totally yeah exactly and I feel like those are like the big three of like non-counselor counselors mm-hmm. like my sister and my mom have given me like not stories per se but just like general vibes just like oh yeah you're absolutely a therapist once they're in that chair like yeah yeah and like, it's, I'm not trying to like do that, but yeah, like, no, no, it uh, but it's just like people, it yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. It's like a bartender, just, like nobody, nobody, no bartender goes into this being like, I cannot wait to counsel some people today. Yeah. But eventually the <laughs> guy's going to come in there, drink half a bottle of Fireball and start crying. And, and be you know, like, my, my, my wife. Yeah. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> but I think probably like the thing about all those places is it's like, the one place that you can it's one of the places that you can go to focus on yourself you're entirely alone with another person you're yeah. like going there for i mean arguably self-care self-care i don't know about the bartender thing but like maybe people need time away but like you're arguably going there for self-care you're going there to focus on yourself and i feel like it probably like brings up a lot of emotions like you know when i go to my hairdresser i'm like wow it's been a long time since i've spent money on myself and like felt like really good at like like i feel really good about how i look and i like how this person makes me feel about myself and so like i'm gonna want to yeah. talk to them more about these things so yeah, they totally just like, volunteer like that yeah, yeah. yeah and it's and, a like, natural hairdresser and then you don't know... you have to <laughs> <laughs> there he is further back past the street. <laughs> that junior high bully? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I knew I he was somewhere. You son of a bitch. <laughs> so what I meant to say was when I used to go to the hairdresser right, yeah. okay, and gotcha. then they would keep dressing my hair until I got really dizzy and I had to put my head down between my knees in the corner for a while. Like it, it's extremely similar to working out. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. I totally missed it. What? Well, I had this really good art for a joke planned, and then you kind of just completely came up and just like spiked the ball back into my court. <laughs> I was like, no, but I was. I was oh, gonna be funny. Thing. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Oh, How are you? Sorry, were you yeah. trying to say something and someone fucking interrupted you with a shitty joke about what you're saying? Huh. For, yeah, cool? this, this happened last night while we were chatting. I'm just being spiteful. Yeah, you know what? Go that's a fair point, Nicole. I did interrupt your story last night. If you wanted to finish it now, you could absolutely do that. that that's okay. We, I'm not feeling vulnerable enough to be able to bring that joke up again because Kelly fucking roasted me the first thing I said. So. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> so, okay. I think it's time. But, Nicole, it's your show. Should we transition? Or should be transistor, as Josh would say. <laughs> yeah, I think transition. Yeah. It fucking it, sucks. It is Josh's <laughs> game, so I think we should use Josh's terminology. And I would love to transistor into a, into a game. I appreciate the respect. I, even... <laughs> I got Go you, pal. On. Hmm. Actually, where's my pen? I should probably have that as well. Fun story. No. Actually, I was Josh's high school bully. It's true. Oh, really? I'm traumatized forever. <laughs> Here, nice. We do need to talk about this. As well. I'm actually the the kid I picked on the most in junior high. We're good buddies too now. So what you've all missed during the technical difficulties break was that Ian's contention is that the game Stardew Valley is not nearly progressive enough socially. Yeah, um, that's right. And it's very problematic. So why don't you expand on that? Oh, well, it just, like, propagates monogamy and, you know, just, like, the nuclear family. Like, it mm. doesn't really open up, like, the, the, the role-playing uh, world enough to, you know, non-monogamous people, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. But if you wanted to, like, have a farm... You know, mm-hmm. marry a couple women. Mm-hmm. You know, which ones? <laughs> get really progressive. Which you know? ones? Start right. like a commune, not a cult. It's not a cult. It's not a cult. <laughs> but like maybe you build a few bombs and like bomb some parliament buildings, but it's not a cult. 
Yeah, nope, they're for the fridges. The bombs mm -hmm. are for the fridges. <laughs> I can guarantee this without looking it up. Someone has made a poly mod for Stardew Valley. Without yeah. a doubt. Oh, wow. Oh, perfect. Good. Uh, Have you actually also, played Stardew, Ian? Hmm? Have you played Stardew? <laughs> What's that? Um... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, no, I have like I have ethical concerns with the game. Yeah. I can't play it. Yeah, exactly. That makes like, sense. To suggest that Ian hasn't played Stardew Valley is to suggest like, I mean, what else would he do? Just play like years on end worth of uh, Company of Heroes? Like, I mean, that would be oh, a yeah. very I'm silly thing to do. Yeah, Duck. thank very you, thank choice. you. Yeah, yeah. Or Age of Empires Four. Oh, bro. <laughs> Sorry, you said <laughs> Company of Heroes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that uh, refers to uh, yeah, it's Amazon. It's a company now, it's like of heroes. Plus hours. Oh, gosh, and sponsor of the show. Like oh, I see Paige has found us a yeah, yeah. polyamory Stardew Valley model. In fact, it used to be the 6,227. They're so happy. It's the only happy moment. Stardew Valley polyamory model. Hell yeah. See, I would have married Maru and Leah if I could have. And Dr. Harvey. Dr. Harvey's an anxious wreck and I'm so into it. It's just the age of numbers, too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Glad you chose. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> we were busy. Uh, we were busy talking about how great um, warmongering is in video games. So mm -hmm. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah, totally. Anyways, um, to our we could our, just turn the mics or turn the cameras off and just make a white by white guy video game podcast right now. Perfect, yeah. ready to go. Because <laughs> because there aren't enough of those yet. Yeah, no, I just, yeah, we're doing the white guy board game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, which is completely different for the record. totally different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so two should, I, should I go? <laughs> two things uh, before we get started. Uh, the first question is, Kelly, I'm actually a hack and a fraud, and I don't remember what the P stands for in our rule system anymore. Well, I mean, you can never pronounce it to begin with, to be fair. I mean, I can't, and I always bullshit my way through it anyways, but I should probably have it written down. It's the, the P stands for second. Right. Uh, not, okay, all right. So, learning from previous incarnations of your 10 years on this show. Yes. I feel like now, at the outset of an adventure... Is a great time for you, the GM, to differentiate your approach to what the three stats represent. I absolutely can do that right now. All right. So body is physicality. It's the easiest one. Right. Um, if you're trying to lift something, it should probably be body. If you're trying to throw something, it should probably be body. If you're trying to... And thematically, that's all we're going to be doing, right? Because Just bodying it's... people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, under, do, I, do I get a bonus stat for that? <laughs> just, if you want to caress someone's <laughs> face gently with the back of your knuckles, would that also be body? I feel like I'd be psyche because I'd be really creeped out after that. <laughs> so this is the thing. I think that says more about, about you than anything if you're like well, have an immediate aversion to affection, but we can well, get into yeah. that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> so uh, I've never told you what a good GM you are. Please don't do that to me. Please don't. Oh, do you not like compliments? Positive reinforcement is not something we should deal with right now. Man, you got good style. Ugh. Um, <laughs> understanding. Just sit a little is, closer down on the couch. Understanding <laughs> is. Oh, that doesn't matter to me at all. Oh, okay. Right. It's the emotional shit that gets me. I'm German. Come on. <laughs> do, 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 do not talk to me like that. Um, understanding is a fundamental breakdown of like mental. Understanding how people's like mental states work. So that'd be like if we had to use uh, stats that are common in other like tabletops or video games stuff like that that'd be charisma yeah yeah um, like oh with, i misread the situation yeah. understanding okay. is literally understanding the world, the world around you and psyche is nice. like breaking <laughs> if, if understanding is that surface level ment mental stuff psyche is the below the surface level that's going into like mind game the weird underwater fucked up shit that if you brought it to the surface it would look like those weird blobfishes that people kill horribly by the like, oh, right. look at its funny nose. It's like, that thing's dying right now. <laughs> You're gonna look you should probably not bring that, you should probably not bring that up here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, isn't our entire adventure going to be underwater shit? In this case, yes. Mm. Hey. And so, yes, my next question actually splits into two further questions. Had, has everyone here heard of Atlantis? Space shuttle, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely that. And not the underwater city that Plato brought up as a theoretical concept and people have used for conspiracy theories for like two and a half thousand years now. No, oh, man, you should do your research. It's, it's out there, man. <laughs> no, it's, it's real. I'm pretty sure the Union Army burned it down in the Civil War. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, the other question is... 
<laughs> Has everyone here heard of Power Rangers? Hell yes! Yes. Because Point these are both you. very important to today's oh, story. Fuck yeah. Nice. So, a little bit of a background first, because for those who haven't heard of Atlantis, it's very important that they hear what Atlantis is. Mm-hmm. Nice. So, okay. I should probably get my... Uh, I'm excited for the Power Rangers part. Get a little sip here first, because I need my GM. Is White Ranger going to make an appearance? Oh. Cause maybe no, I should have been here. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, uh, they kept putting on a hood instead of their helmet, and I got really uncomfortable really fast. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do like this, like, this new like sleeveless hoodie thing. Yeah, it, just, it didn't look good. No, no. The 90s were a different time. Yeah. You got frosted tips. You got frosted tips and you can't come anymore. <laughs> you got frosted tips and you can't what anymore? You can't come anymore. It's crazy. The, the two are actually correlated. Yeah, he frosted his tip. He didn't. Like, yeah, he didn't he just do can't it do it anymore. <laughs> he got fro- he kept real bad frostbite. He can't. Yeah, 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 he, like, yeah he lost his wiener. Speaking of just like, <laughs> just sealed right over the top like a callus. Yeah. <laughs> I learned today about the concept of like a smegma fetish. Ugh. And this was, I mean, um, the extremely mm. private quote hit server that only me, Nicole, and Josh use on Discord. Um, I was posting some extremely terrifying things in there, and I could not bring myself to post the smegma fetish. That's it was fair. I actually appreciate I appreciate you more for that one. You're welcome. Um so speaking of Spagma, let's get back to Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> Good segue, John. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like that was the smoothest segue we could have ever had. Yeah, yeah. Um, Good transistor. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you. Was it twisted? No, let's not talk about corn. That's like <laughs> now we should not do that. We can talk about corn. Um Go ahead. Atlantis, the oh, city cool. of legends. Since Plato saw it sink into the sea 2300 years ago. It long caused adventures and conspiracy theories to like a lot of time and ink to search for and write about. A devastated ancient city struck down by hubris, a technological marvel hid under the sea. These theories and more were tossed around. However, the answer was one much more interesting. When the year of our Lord 2019 came around, a man who fell overboard drunk off of his yacht was rescued by a strange vessel. You see, the captain of the rescue vessel explained, vessel, come on, Josh, <laughs> get sober, explained that the elite at the time of Plato actually really just hated that Athenians had started to move en masse to the island and wouldn't stop gentrifying it. When a business owner saw a sign for Diogenes, doggone good chicken, he knew that we had gone too far. And so a 10-year project to just dig the underside of the island out began. And after that 10 years came by, we actually, someone had a hemlock poison hallucination of how phase space worked. And they were able to create a shield that when they buried themselves underneath the sea, they wouldn't drown. This is all very historical. I spent a lot of time reading this. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So... After spying on the year uh, on the rest of the Earth for about 2,300 years, the Atlanteans finally figured, you know what? Capitalism seems to really be working for the people above the sea. We should emerge again and join in on this thing. Oh, no. <laughs> don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't tell me that they had, like, a matriarchal, like, totally egalitarian society beforehand. And you're like, this sucks. This yeah. is so boring it's peaceful i hate it man those motherfuckers got iphones up there Yo, <laughs> have you seen a fidget spinner <laughs> they're so cool i've been following elon musk on twitter and it really seems like we need to <laughs> this is like a wild party yeah this seems what i want to do yeah. so it's true that marks have failed to consider fidget spinners it is true it is one of the hardest <laughs> things that, uh that uh angles and marks had to contend with is that at the time they had not discovered fidget spinners and thus uh dust invalidating cap- dust capital yeah. is actually outdated now because fidget spinners exist now. yeah because they're sweet mm-hmm. um <laughs> i mean when i was doing a D thing at a friend's place i was literally like spinning it in my hand while i was like dming and i felt horrible about myself i'm like i'm just this thing is just so much so fun. Amusing. I know. I know. <laughs> You're a fidget spinner person Sorry, now. now. Uh, this is well, this is like four years ago now, but yes, I was a fidget spinner person by virtue of it was in the DM kit and I couldn't stop using it. Yeah. I was like <laughs> we're I remember we're I think we were at a 
Were you there when I threw Alan's fidget spinner? Oh, that was extremely good. Yeah. Uh, like, we were at a festival. This um, is extremely relatable uh, for everyone who's for watching. For the, the bullying thing as well. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It is bullying. It's very relevant to our yeah. topic. Let's talk about that. Yeah. But, like, uh, we were at a festival and we were... Uh, my friend Alan got the fidget spinner. He was the yeah. first guy to get the fidget spinner. Oh, okay. and of course, like the meme at the time was just like they they're lame, yeah. right? And uh, and he like had one. And I was like making fun of him the whole time. Or <laughs> I was just like, "Ooh, I'm Alan. I have a fidget spinner." <laughs> like so <laughs> awesome and stuff like that. And then like we were all like, it had been like we've been doing this for days. And then like we we're standing by the fire, we we're all just chilling. And he's like spinning it, and I like leaned over to Alan, like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry for making fun of you for the fidget spinner thing." <laughs> I'm like, can I try it? He's like, yeah, sure. And he like gave it to me, and I just like threw it into the fire. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my god! No hesitation at all. He's like, dude, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm so sorry. I had to. Like, I don't know. If... <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I... So yeah. So obviously, have... capitalism worked great for Atlantis. Yeah, and, and our friends and everyone. Uh, <laughs> really. Uh, and they they've noticed that like, well. Yeah, it's great to be able to get like video games, iPhones, um, that really specific type of cheese that you need to put on your eggs Benedict for it to taste really good. Mm, that one, yeah, that mm. definitely that one that I know. Um, <laughs> feel a little targeted because I made you eggs Benedict this weekend and I didn't put cheese really on it. Was that no. a hint? No, it was actually it your eggs Benedict were amazing and yeah. Uh, you if you're ever, if you're ever special cheese on it, if you're ever, make the cheese good. If you're ever hung over after a wedding and at Nicole's place, uh, she will make you an amazing eggs Benedict. But what's the cheese? Uh, I don't actually know. Uh, yeah, what cheese. is the cheese actually? Uh, I need to know. I figured goat cheese would probably Nicole's taste really good on eggs Benedict. Yeah, right. I would say so. Yeah, I'd be good. I'd, 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 I'd even say chocolate cheddar. I think yeah. it would be fine. Yeah, well, that'd be a good time too. Regardless, <laughs> on top of all these amazing Josh things. is like, stop. <laughs> stop no, interrupting. No. I'm so no, sorry. No, I totally This, this is the exact way. energy I want right now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, well, can I ask a question about this world? What's that? Well, because you, you mentioned Marx and Angles, right? Yes. So my question is, Marx and Angles, what is this? My geometry homework? Yeah. Because <laughs> Angles. Well, and it's my homework, so it gets marks. Uh, yes, I didn't even actually put on that one. So thanks for that second one, because mm. I didn't actually get it. Um, we love explaining jokes here on the program. <laughs> well, that's the best way to actually have a joke, is that yeah. it not actually be funny until you actually like spend a long amount of time explaining it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's my like how the show is not funny until we get to episode like, 12, 13, I'm going to guess. Probably somewhere around there. That, what episode are we on now? Eight? I'm going to I'm gonna guess episode 20. We're going to get funny. One day. That's probably One a day. more yeah. achievable. We might even we might even have better audio equipment by then. What could be better than this setup? This is true. Yeah. This is very true. So, on top of these wonderful delicacies we got, you of course get those less fun aspects of capitalism, such as like, what? like venture capitalists oh. <laughs> and massive property owners. Both of which who have started to move in onto the scene. Now. Before we go any further, I actually need all of my characters here to introduce themselves. And I only think it's fair because Ian's sitting to the left of me that yeah, he starts. First. Yeah, totally. All right. So the only only thing I knew about this is like it's in Atlantis. Yes. And I don't I don't know how this game works or anything or what if it's doesn't okay. matter. Okay, it's cool. all good. Yeah. All right. Um I'm my name is Merman. Um Perfect. I am a merman. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, I am top half fish, bottom half human. I love it. Yep. And uh, uh, Merman is a tailor and owns his own business called Fins and Feet and specializes in merman apparel. Perfect. Um, my, I was allowed to have one thing I bring with me. Yes. It's a sewing kit. And uh, uh, unique talents I put down is uh, uh, I'm, I'm Mormon. Excellent. I love it. So my, I'm Merman the Merman Mormon. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kelly, because you're to the left of uh, Ian, you can go next. Sure. Uh, my character's name is Smegma Glands. Smegma Glands. <laughs> yeah. That's Jesus what in, man. Uh, definitely that, and not because I for neglected to make a character and have been trying to make it over the course of the show. Yeah. Uh, totally. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. All right. 
Uh, so you just smegma glands, no descriptor or anything like that. Well, smegma glands is an adventure capitalist. Adventure capitalist. Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, I'll make so, sure for the space there. Yeah. So he's got uh, he's got a bumble profile in which he he talks about how he loves adventures. Yeah, um, makes and sense. He's really proud of it. He feels like that's really unique. <laughs> um, he's never met anyone else that likes adventures. He thinks this is like new, <laughs> like un untrodden territory perfect perfect yeah and And, um so okay wait so is he are the atlanteans merman or is he like a different species he's like you know how originally humanity was one strain of sort of like the ad hominems family tree yeah the ad hominems family yeah ad hominems that's definitely what it means i know what you mean yeah and definitely not me just trying to remember basic biology of the Top of my head. Yeah. Drunk. You don't speak Latin, Josh? What the fuck? It's, what kind of GM are like, you? I spent way too much time researching vulgar Latin the other day, and I'm still traumatized from it. So uh, <laughs> this is sort of like, like Neanderthals split off from Atlanteans who are totally just like oh, okay, all yeah. hominid at yeah. this point. They're all like, they're people. Yeah. people, And then yeah. maybe they, they used to be like kind of mermaid yeah, And then they're, they're like just, mostly things, people. Yeah, things just got yeah. really fucked up after they started like inbreeding with everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So, and then the the bottom half human, top half fish was just a uh, just a regressive dream. Yeah, gene. <laughs> yeah, okay. just 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 a regressive. Oh, uh, uh, it's like a double recessive. Yeah, yeah. It's a double recessive. Yeah, yeah. It's so like, like oh, you could be fuck. two humans, and then like <laughs> it's like, man, I'm, I, I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you guys should not have gotten married. <laughs> yeah, it's a fish boy. <laughs> All right, so Bumble Profile, oh. Adventure, I have that written down. Okay, cool. I guess my response to what my character looks like is um, like a regular, like a very typical looking uh, Atlantean, but just like nothing going on in the eyes. Just dead eyes, eh? Yeah, like that Tom Cruise, Mark Zuckerberg, Thousand Yard Stare. Perfect. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, like like I, I would say extremely generically handsome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like you'd never be like, oh, this this dude's hot. You just you go like if you had to critique their appearance, you'd be like, no, that's like that's a person. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm sort of like a like a Josh Hartnett of Atlanteans. And uh <laughs> that's uh that's a reference that the Gen Z audience won't quite get here. <laughs> because I think that's the last time Josh Hartnett was relevant was when we were kids. Mm. <laughs> Am I wrong? I don't know who that is. Uh, did you ever watch Pearl Harbor? Nope. Good. Isn't that <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Josh Hartnett was in there. Yeah, I think so. Someone once told me that my brother looks like Josh Hartnett. So, Which is funny. That's how relevant he is. He is um, in high school, girls thought, or girls thought he was mentionable. So There you go. Uh, that was... Noteworthy man. 50, like 13 years ago. God, don't... <laughs> so moving no. on the way smegma dresses it's just sort of obvious he just like goes and buys like brands like he's, he's just he's just he's like brands. he's, oh, he's like, like normcore yeah. yeah like all right those are diesel people like diesel i should buy those jeans diesel, yeah right it's oh, 100 yeah. percent his entire fashion sense. i just want to quickly mention what I, what clothing i'm wearing if that's cool yes. sorry you're enjoying you uh, just like beautifully tailor- tailored dress pants. Ah, perfect. But that's it. Just pants. Yeah, that's gotcha. <laughs> I mean, you're fish on the top, so you don't need a shirt, right? Exactly, yeah. right. But no, some, I mean, some, some, whole... some top half fish people do, but I don't. I don't. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm like, you just specify that you're like kind of counterculturing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I don't buy into this whole shirts thing. Mm-hmm. That's fair. All yeah. right. No, I, I, I don't say, make sure. Feel free to inject. Ideally, the entire remaining hour will just be diversions about our characters' backgrounds, so that all the stuff Josh is preparing can just be rolled over into next week. So just so that I'm stuck <laughs> here a little bit longer. And your character will just walk off. Well, I'm just saving you work. Because that that is something I do enjoy saving myself work. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicole. Your character. Well, I didn't finish my character. Oh, you didn't? No. You have more about Smegma Glands? Yeah. He's not just average and buys diesel? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we could just leave my background at Adventure Capitalist and flesh it out later. Um, but my unique talent is... Okay, yeah, I don't know. What's my unique talent? I don't know. Paige, what's my unique man. talent? <laughs> Wait for the teleprompter to up. I'm just going to... Oh, yeah, teleprompter. Paige, what's my unique talent? 
Oh, she's muted. Big shrugs. Uh, oh, let me unmute her. Uh, oh, you can do. You can make that face <laughs> with your hands. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Oh no, my unique talent is that I can impress people with how like good my business card is, like an American Psycho. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I've just got a really sick <laughs> set of business cards, and anybody that's involved in business, like it helps me charm them. My God, is that off white? Mm-hmm. No. Okay, white. <laughs> yeah, yeah shell white, nice. Mm-hmm. But we're under the sea, so my business cards are teal, and you know, d- depending on depending on how you look at them, they kind of shift from being like blue teal to green teal. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm. And for inventory, my character uh, has a ventriloquist dummy named Endo. Oh, we're back to the Endo thing, oh, are we? I, God I, damn it! Idea. Have you had? A puppet named Dendo. Before. Oh, who can remember? There's, there's no, there's no way of watching the old episodes, Fuck. so we'll just have to kind of. Yeah. All right. We'll just have to move on from those. I don't know which is which is a better name, Angina or Smegma at this point. Ooh. I mean, I feel like my names only improve over time. That's kind of my journey. It's, it's like a uh, nomenclatural fitness journey. Uh, <laughs> I don't get fitter, but my like character sheets do. The okay. gains, the gains that I'm concerned with is my name game. <laughs> yeah, She's personally, I, I, I think Angina was better because it like kind of sounds like a woman's name, like it's like Amelia or like Angelina. Oh, but it's yeah. like, whereas Smegba is like just very clearly Dick Cheese. <laughs> Smegina, Smegina, nice. Well, no, like Smeg, Smegma is like John down in Atlanta. So that's the thing. It's a very common name down there. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't realize. I think it's calm, blessed one in Atlantean. <laughs> <laughs> the one of sea foam. The one that smells of fish. <laughs> Nicole, your character's name. <laughs> so my character's name is Dr. Gillip McCrawfish. So you can just call me Dr. Gill. Um, Ooh, I basically... <laughs> yeah. I Sorry. basically look like a blobfish with a mustache, um, and I'm always wearing a suit, even when it seems weird. Um, I'm a Southern businessman. Um, I basically um, I exploit people that are struggling with mental illness by I host a show um, where I shame them for their mental illness for profit under the guise of offering them psychological help. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I just, it just came to me. I was like, yeah. I, I don't think it's based off of anyone. Yeah. So wild and out there that like definitely no one else has done it or like, I'm, yeah, not any, uh, what they, what do they say in stories? Any resemblance to any, um, real character yeah. is completely coincidental. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Coincidental or intentional. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you have anything in your inventory or a unique ability? Oh, I forgot to put something in my inventory, but I'm going to go ahead and say that in my inventory, I have an expired psychology um, license. Or a, oh, yeah, a, an expired uh, license to practice psychology in the state of California. Um, and for special talents, I have um, finding loopholes in laws. Um, nice. Yeah. Again, totally just off the top of my head, not based on anyone real, just... I'm a writer, so everything I write is fiction. I think I could have been a doctor with this chicken scratch. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> could you have been Dr. Gillip McCrawfish? I mean, could have been. I, I could have been because all you have to de- tell, do is tell people to get real. and Yeah, but no, text. when you say when you tell people to get real in this universe, you're spelling real with two E's. Oh, that Ooh, makes sense. Yeah. I like it. You need to get reeled in. <laughs> yeah. You're out of control. To get like caught and impaled and brought to the surface and eaten. Exactly. That's how you fix your life. That's yeah. how you're you're bringing yourself into the world that way. Maybe reel it in is like the opposite. It's like you're <laughs> you're losing it, man. Yeah, maybe you get reeled. You off. It's like, hey, get reeled. Yeah, right? get like, reeled. Get yeah, it. yeah, like that. <laughs> get reeled. Get reeled, <laughs> nerd. Mm-hmm. All right. So, despite the fact that you are all very different people in both physical appearance and trade and personality, you've somehow found yourself brought before the president 
of Atlantis. Hell yeah. When I say brought before them, they haven't appeared in person. They're a little too important for that. However, their giant projected head is in front of you. Oh, nice. And they say, it's you three that I have selected today to save Atlantis. Me? <laughs> but I'm a simple man fish. <laughs> we usually get teenagers for this gig, but uh, most of them have <laughs> left Atlantis for uh, greener shores. Uh, okay. It's a problem. Look at the, the I look at the, hot. It's fair. I, lo I look at the people beside me and I go, what were you thinking? <laughs> that voice is part of the creative license as well, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was just, it just felt like Dr. Gill to me. I... Just came for to some me. reason. <laughs> I'm really excited to watch you maintain that voice over the next however many sessions. Probably a month. <laughs> oh boy. I say this to somebody who has never picked a voice for the character they regret and can't maintain. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jenna, right. how we miss you. So he goes, in times of trial, Atlantis has looked to heroes to save the city from sure and certain destruction. And by that you mean teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> well, who else are you going to trust to save the world? Yeah, right? Oh, God, I see where this is going. <laughs> That's where the Power Rangers come in, isn't it? You're going to be shoveling snow. <laughs> God. <Come on. laughs> Shoveling snow, fuck me. <laughs> fuck me. Fuck. Fuck. Or if you're going full men and I go, fuck me. Fuck me. Are you guys going to eat your pizza? Or? I mean, I'll get to it. Yeah, I'll get around to it. I'm going to freaking not jam my face full of pizza while I'm trying to DM. Yeah. Really? Because I've jammed a, my a face full job. of pizza for an hour now and it's great. <clears throat> well, most traditional threats to Atlantis have been those of war and trial and tribulation. Today, the real fight is against gentrification. We've got European venture capitalists and American landowners attempting to just hostile takeover the entirety of not just the communities, the suburbs of Atlantis, but the entirety of Atlantis, even the inner city, <gasps> the only place where property is still affordable to our young people. And to the fishmen. And the fishmen. That's where I come from. <laughs> no, that's where I live. You've got to. I've got to help you. <laughs> so today, we're going to present you all with your own heroic garb, your own super suits, and I swear to God, it's a fucking shirt. <laughs> Lose my mind. That's some very bad news for you, as the panels behind them slide open. You see skin tight helmeted suits. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> is is mine it's fish size. It's fish. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's a fish shaped at the top. Is it fully fish shaped or it's like half and half? It's got the half and half. How does the helmet does the helmet just like <laughs> am I like it's like a bulb it, at the it like you see every <laughs> head and there's like like a gill vent going out the front and out the back. Okay. Because, like, <laughs> my eyes are on the top of my head, right? So, is it like a fishbowl? It's literally a fishbowl. Okay, because I can, because I, I need to see. <laughs> you need to see all three six. <laughs> yeah. That's your, that's your true secret ability. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have three, three 60 degrees. Yeah, I have, uh, I have prey vision. So, like, I can only see what prey sees. Uh, so, yeah, these are your, uh, skin sight. <laughs> it's almost like as you see it happen, <laughs> You can sorry. You can hear like a nineties, a nineties like teen rock song playing in the background. What does it sound like? Hell, get <laughs> someone just fucking wailing on a guitar. Are we really in danger? It feels like that was uh, pretty chill. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get to the part of the song where there's lyrics. <laughs> yeah. We just need those 90s lyrics yeah. coming our way.
so is gentrification. <laughs> Mighty Wolf and Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I thought that like the lyrics in those days were pretty slapped together. Like they, it's, oh. it's like they weren't even writing the songs, caring what the message was at all. To be fair, you know I was originally Go -Go Power Rangers was thought out. No, I'm talking about this 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 Pacific Atlantean. This, uh, this oh no, I think all of them were like Coke ideas. I was, I was like, like, go go power ring, or like they're turtles, <laughs> they're green, they're mean, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Wait, is that what you think the game song of Teenage Mutant Ninja no, no. was? No, no, Teenage Mutant I mean, Ninja Turtles. I mean, that's like uh, Dragon but, Ball Z, uh, where they're just like. We're just gonna keep saying Dragon Ball Z yeah. over and over again, and that's now our opening. Right, which is yeah, why it's the worst show in existence. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles told you exactly what the fuck was up with its lyrics. Those were carefully crafted. Nice. You don't have to ever have nice. Oh, Jesus <laughs> nice. You don't have I to live, ever I live with the dude, bro. It's fine. Into the middle of the show, no context, but as soon as the episode opens, you know that Leonardo leads. You know Donatello does machines. You know yeah, that Raphael is radical, cool and rude, yeah. cool but rude, and you know that Michelangelo is a party dude. Well, I didn't know that because I was poor and only had two channels as a kid, and you never, never watched the like old '90s Ninja Turtles movie. I never oh, it was really good. I oh, mean, that whole yeah. that whole era of where it was just like '90s. It was really ripped things beating up stuff like yeah. Street Sharks, Teenage Mutant oh, Ninja man. Turtles, yeah. Biker Mice from Mars, Mighty Ducks, Mummies Alive. Like well, in default, they only got like weird knockoff Saskatchewan versions of shows in <laughs> which like the like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles they're like they're all green. They're just like wearing like Rough Rider outfits and they the got melon like, heads. Melon heads. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the story. <laughs> yes. Anyways, um, I was originally gonna say, did you guys know what Super Sentai was? And then Nicole made that weave joke, and I realized that I wasn't able to actually say that anymore. I had to say Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for taking Super Sentai away from me. I'm sorry that I make a joke about you being a weeb. I'm, I'm not sorry, but I'm, I acknowledge <laughs> that I make a joke about you being a weeb every show. <laughs> I just thought you guys were bringing up the Super Sentai thing to bully me because it's a thing I got pinned to the wall for in the first episode for not knowing, but I Did mean, I surely, you? Josh, you were watching the first episode. I, I was totally, and no, the Super Sentai reference. Mm. I do. It's it's literally like Super Sentai was just what Power Rangers stole the footage from, and then stuck white people in the live action parts. Like oh, it's all like the combat Hunger, you see like Power Games. Rangers. Mm. No, like all the combat you see in Power Rangers is like ripped off. Like it's literally stolen footage or bought footage from oh. Super Sentai. Like, yeah, nobody's gonna watch a show unless there's white people in it, Josh. Have you and ever one token black TV guy before? and one token black guy. Yeah, just, wasn't Blue Ranger like? Wasn't he added in later? Maybe I Blue, I, Blue Ranger. <laughs> Wait, so who's yeah. talking black guy in this show? Uh, well, that's a good question. Maybe one of our guests going forward. Please do not yeah. blackface the character. I, in... I, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Please I mean, do not do well, that. I have I mean, shows in Smegma's voice. Now. Yeah, me I neither. Could, really, I could yeah. dig deep in this well in oh. terms of. <laughs> please, please do not. <laughs> All right, Chad. <laughs> it's funny though, as you guys just start to put on your outfits, a very obnoxious. Alarm starts to sound in the background, and the president looks panicked all of a sudden. He goes, Atlantean warriors, there's someone invading the island. And a screen lowers from the ceiling, and in staticky, you see what appears to be a backhoe transforming into a giant robot and digging up the land in one of the poor districts of the Atlantis city center. And it says, after 10,000 years, I'm finally free! <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That was a, a Power Rangers reference for y'all. <laughs> yeah, that reference absolutely landed with Slam me. dunk, yeah. The person who has watched so much Power Rangers. I mean, I like the idea of a backhoe being trapped underground for 10,000 years. Know, right? <laughs> It's like, what? Aren't you recent? <laughs> Weren't you guys invented in the last, like, 75 years? Oh, how little you know about the <laughs> yeah. world. <laughs> Please, the Atlanteans had fucking phase space generators 2,500 years ago. That oh, call is the world's oldest profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do we have, like, a fucking, like, sad, like, whistle noise thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jokes like that? Yeah, absolutely. We should. It's just the technical difficulty screen. <laughs> no, I think it's this one. 
Ah, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Wow. The producer is producing over my production, which is very upsetting. <laughs> of the mighty have fallen. So, <laughs> being slammed into your comically large transport vehicle that could probably fit about seven people, but seems to only have three in it at the moment, hmm. you zoom towards the encounter. Well, okay, I guess yeah. this is what we're doing. Now, you got, got you got conversation time before you get there. Oh, so at this okay. point, I, I'm probably being... I feel like being railroaded and finally choosing a voice for my character. You definitely are. Okay, all right. I'm open to pitches. Uh, you're pitching to the wrong guy here. I've got to come up with enough voices for all the characters oh, in my story. Oh, I want to make a slight alteration to my character. Yes. Uh, the top half of him is a halibut. A halibut, <laughs> yeah. all right. <laughs> So both my eyes are facing forward. Yes. And uh, I'm just very flat. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. You that. can't be uh, in your Megan changes to your character just for the hell of it. Well, well I just... he can't. <laughs> <laughs> DM says, I can. <laughs> so I'm like looking yeah. kind of like with my very narrow tipped head with my two eyes right here. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crazy, eh, boys? I don't know what. So Dr. Gill says... I'm a little distracted because I'm trying to pull my diesel jeans over my Power Ranger suit. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, I can fix that. <laughs> I, I let you try and fix it. I, I, I try and fix this. You're going to alter? Okay, that's yeah. going to be a body roll. We're going to get our first roll here. Yeah, yeah. So gotta, and I am a tailor, so yeah, exactly. this, should be, this should be good. <laughs> this doesn't come from my understanding of pants. Uh... <laughs> It should be two dice, by the way. Oh, two dice? Yeah. Sorry. No, oh, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, you understand pants. It's not like you're like wrestling the oh. pants into it. But I have a negative under, an understanding. So. No, no, your body roll. This is okay. Okay, all right. How does this work? Okay, you'll, yeah, you'll let roll. me know. Yeah. So we so got plus or minus one. five plus ones. Yeah. Six. So you successfully, as if like m magically moving these pants around, you managed to alter them in a flash of scissors and sewing. The fit are over the Power Ranger suit. Yeah. So now it's just like, uh, I'm going to call you the, you're going to be the Yellow Ranger. Mm -hmm. So you've got this yellow top with Can't the yellow helmet. I can't believe you helmet. would say that just because my character's Asian. That's fucked up. I know, it's really <laughs> fucked up. Almost as bad as the actual Power Rangers writers. Mm. <laughs> and, just wait till you hear my character's voice. And dark, <laughs> oh, no. dark blue diesel jeans. Maybe yeah. a little tight over it, but they fit. Nice. So everyone can know that you still wear diesel, despite oh, the fact you're in your power. Uh, I, I do do this with my human feet, yeah. because fins. Yeah, fins aren't so great yeah. with sewing. So, so I have very dexterous yeah. toes, and I like. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll fix it. And I'm like, <laughs> scooch up to him. You're like, like flopping over to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That so was yeah. a very minor alteration. Um, of myself, <laughs> yeah. Actually. So yeah, now you have uh, diesel jeans fitted over your uh, your Power Ranger suit. Doctor <laughs> Doctor Gale says. Gee whiz, is there? I, I sure got a whiz like a racehorse. Is there a is there a toilet on this thing? And goes wandering around looking for a toilet. That's fair. <laughs> very very integrated into the oh, role playing experience. Tacit. Yeah. I also just ripped off the snapback of my hat, and I'm having trouble fixing. Okay, it. so I finally clear my throat and go. <clears throat> All right, guys, who's driving? That's a very wow! Good I want to fuck you. <laughs> That's a hot voice. Damn. That's also a very good question. Who yeah. is driving this? I so I lean in really quietly to Merman. <laughs> I say, "It's just the jeans, bro." And then I kind of like <laughs> saunter away, waggling my hips towards the the I don't the know joysticks? the steering. Is it yeah. joysticks? It's joysticks. Yeah. Right. You ever driven a forklift before? Do no. Who says this? Wait, Wait are you asking me as a GM or is yeah. this oh, like, as a person? Have you ever driven a Oh, forklift? okay. I was just like, I was oh, like I a co-pilot. Like, so yeah. I spent <laughs> yeah. several months getting told I would uh, get taught to drive a Bobcat and then like ensuing we probably get a raise and this didn't seem to ever happen. Okay. Uh, well, it was implied. But I've nearly been dropped out of a, like a big boom lift if that helps. Well, that's pretty exciting in yeah. and of itself, but exciting does not have to be a positive thing for the record. Mm. Um... But a lot That's of That's how I explain my <laughs> sexual techniques to my partners. Okay, go on. <laughs> a lot of these bobcats have like a single joystick for like steering. Yeah. And then one for like the bucket. 
So it's like that, basically. And you're not entirely sure what the second joystick's for yet, but the first joystick appears to steer the craft. It's on autopilot at the moment. Do you want to attempt to drive it? I, I Yeah, absolutely. That's what I thought I was doing already. All right, perfect. You're, you've hopped behind the, the metaphorical wheel. And I'm just like kind of there back by myself. I'm just like, I don't... It's like everything he, he says, I hate. But the way he says it really makes me... Some, some damn jeans. Some damn jeans. I should have made them so tight. Ah, you got the wee most perfect for authenticity. Yeah, he said two joysticks, so... The two waggles. Listen, I'm a prop comic, all right? Like, I just... No, fair enough, fair enough. So, uh... Wait, so the left joystick is the main steering one? Uh, yes, the left one would be. There you go. Yes, he's Whoa, whoa, whoa! So, uh... I'm glad you're really into it. Yeah, totally. The right joystick launches bowling balls, or what? Well, we don't know what it does yet. I push the button. You push the button, and it says that you do not have sufficient, um, access to activate those particular features yet. Oh, is this like fucking DLC? Are you going to make us pay for the rest of this? <laughs> Microtransactions for the rest of the campaign. I don't, I don't like this. I know he was just talking about how to turn your passion into monetizing, <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to do to you guys, not the other way around. <laughs> no one ever expects the Inquisition. Mm. <laughs> so you notice how he just like quickly just yeah. like flashed his shirt up as he walked by the camera? <laughs> also, if you're grabbing more beer. <laughs> Yep, yep. What do you want? Uh, a beer. Okay. <laughs> um, so Dr. Gill wanders out of the washroom and goes, Oh, wow. Some of us threw a bunch of club sodas in when I asked him to put beers in. I didn't actually put those club sodas. I noticed that there's a lot of club sodas. So. Those were, uh, those were all you, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, you wander back from the bathroom, Nicole. Oh, I wander back from the bathroom and I go, uh, well, wow, what what seems to be going on here? What what ha what seems to be the problem that we're trying and to solve? As you say that, the craft drops through the clouds that exist in the Atlantic uh, Atlantean skyline for some reason that doesn't make any sense. It's like mid ocean cloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, okay. Yeah. They drop into it, and you see. Well, that's a fa very active fella right there. Oh yeah. Just like you, right? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Thank you. Nice. Well done. <laughs> Good job, man. If you look at his notebook, he wrote down that joke like I was like, how did you do that? Like, yeah. literally, and I was like, like wait for it, wait for it, wait yeah, for yeah. it, wait for your moment. Uh, and you see this giant, like I said, transformed robotic backhoe. So it's now basically like in like a humanoid form and it has like a scorpion tail, but it's like a backhoe bucket. Oh. And it says in a voice, you rangers won't stop me from developing this land for middle class property you might be right we've literally been doing this for four minutes <laughs> well i want to like kind of clap back at this backhoe robot using the intercom function but i think yes. it's currently locked out to us so i guess i'm just kind of trying to communicate by moving our our little boat around all right it's the only thing i'm allowed to do right okay now. so uh Let's see. What would that? I think I'm thinking I'm gonna make that. Again. I want to kind of. Okay, here's what I want to do. Yes. I want what do you to, want? To like we're in like a little like submersible, right? Yes. I want to kind of like rock it back and forth towards the thing as if like I was an animal, like like a bull, like pawing the dirt, be like, "Huh, you want to go? You want to go?" All right, all right, all right. All right. So that's going to be a. I feel like I, it's a mind game. I think it's a mind game. So mm. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with understanding on this one because like it's like. The, the base level, like, sort of, like, toxic masculinity thing where you're, like, puffing out the chest a little bit. So mm. if I could get an understanding roll from you. Uh, you yeah, the, yeah, give me some dice that currently have, like, five or sixes showing on top. I feel like that's good. For that's me. good luck there? All right, well, that's... I see a five on this one, so I'm going to get you that one. Because we're underwater, right? They're going to roll less and probably just kind of sink. So I will give you these two dice that I saw a five and a six on just for you, Kelly. Oh, that reverberated yeah, more than I planned on it to do. So my apologies, audience. Hold on, let me get my lucky... Ah, your lucky roll board. My uh, lucky yes. dice catcher. Fuck! You. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. What do you have there? I forgot I wasn't. this wasn't out of 20. Um, 
Wait, what kind of roll is it? It's an understanding roll. Oh, that's a plus one. I got a ten. Yeah, you got that's a, 10? a fuck yes. Oh, that's it an is. incredible roll right Absolutely. there. Oh, nice. You're so right, it is. So, like you have driven this kind of craft for years now. I'm not sure the camera. Oh, oh, don't yeah. interrupt him. Come on. <laughs> they need to be. <laughs> they dip and dive, doing this dance of provoc provocation Ooh. of just like provocation? come at me bro a provocative dance you say no, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a one way of intensifying the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> I try and breed with the robot well, yeah, this is what I've learned <laughs> from the show so far is that like for a really for a kind of a professional relationship as we obviously have with our nemesis because it's our job it needs to be sexual. That's that's if it, if there's one thing I know about corporate culture is that you should make it weird as soon as possible so your secretary gets used to it. Oh, that's a terrible joke. I should not have made that joke. You, you, <laughs> you should pretend to be a secretary. Like, with that moment, that would just be the first thing that plays as soon as you go. You should not have made that joke. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, uh, moving past the tacit condoning of sexual harassment at work but maybe we can entrap him <laughs> yeah well i mean if you feel yeah. free to expand on it if you want like i don't think that what that's your gonna thoughts be... <laughs> on the roles of broads in society there? i don't feel like this is gonna get me any further so instead mm. i'm going to talk about how well you maneuver that ship to basically tell this back <laughs> oh that that back to is unable to take your movements than anything else other than a challenge Back it up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know? Oh shit. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's okay. <laughs> Women are laughing. It's acceptable. <laughs> that means my jokes are fine yeah. and they're not uncomfortable. <laughs> Let me see, see this for all women. Isn't that right, Paige? <laughs> <laughs> glass yellow. God, I didn't even think about that. Fuck. I need to drink extra. This is this is the kind of effort that Paige is putting into production right now. Just absolutely <laughs> killing it. Uh, Where are we? What's happening in this story? Is he is he attacking us or He's, like he, he, he assumes a battle stance. Oh, okay. And as he slams his two feet down on the ground, you see that they have two tires centered perfectly on the feet so that he can zip forward very quickly if need be. And this is all underwater, right? So if we just right? wait a yes. moment. We just... Well, well so the, the thing with Atlantis is that, like I said, there's a phase space shield over it. So you're in like... Normal gravity? You're in things? normal gravity oh, okay. and normal stuff like that right now. All right. So this robot, if we just wait a moment, it'll fall asleep, right? Because it's too tired. <laughs> it's got four <laughs> tires though, man. Two tires on each foot. Like roller, like cool rollerblades. Yeah, like rollerblades, man. Okay. So this, this is, is like, the '90s. This man. is like a, a a backhoe developer kind of thing. Does he look like a businessman? He doesn't look like a businessman. Uh he's like the the lackey. But is this a robot or like a mech being conducted by a pilot? That's a very good question. Oh, yeah. Kelly. That's a very good question. Can I? Okay, wait. Can Do I, I have that? any understanding of the nuances of robots and mechs? Do you? Should I roll for yeah, it? Yeah, sounds like a... <laughs> okay, I roll to see if I can figure out whether this person has a pilot or whether the robot should be gendered. I got an eight. You got an eight. You remember from an old Atlantean mechanical class that you took as a, an elective and dropped in the second semester that generally mecha have to be piloted by a person or multiple persons. Oh. Sorry, what did you say the plural of mech was? Mecca. Okay, I turn my head towards it and pray. <laughs> Spelled differently, my friend. <laughs> Wouldn't the plural be mechs? No. No, it's not. Mecca? It's mecha. In what language? In yeah, have call, you guys not watched any it, Gundam? No, I, I would call it mechs. We're not weebs. The <laughs> short for mechanical. Can we keep a tally? Paige, are you keeping a tally of how many weeby things Josh says? Can we, like, post that at the end of every video? Wait, Nicole, how many things do you think Paige is keeping a tally of right now? <laughs> Just well, hopefully the everything. Well, oh, the wait, there she is. Hi, Paige. She back. Hey, Here, I'll put a tally. Anything. That's what, number three there? Sure. Mm. At least. At least weeb count. 
So, so yes. So it looks like it's pilot. I decided yeah. to give an inspiring. Wait, okay, so what was the results of my role? You were you you remembered from your um, one semester class you took of Mecca Max. breakdowns. Yep. It's not Mechs, fuck sakes. <laughs> And uh, you remember that there has to be generally a pilot or multiple pilots in a mech. Mm -hmm. I turned to my crew and I gave an inspiring speech. All right, now listen. I know we come from a wide variety of backgrounds. But on this ship, we speak Atlantean. And the plural of mech is mechs. <laughs> and out there, I only see one mech. <laughs> but it's probably that as many as three pilots and there's three of us which means it's gonna be a fair fight and there's no one i'd rather have a fair fight than you two this weird condescending uh doctor and half of a fish hey. <laughs> <laughs> Fish, fish, you hear him say fish. <laughs> now, I'm gonna need a battle plan. Any suggestions? As much as I'm insulted, I still want to have sex with you, but. <laughs> I believe that's called nagging. Wait, 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 wait. Has your voice <laughs> changed since we started? But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> this is where it's at now. This is where we're gonna be. Uh, so, um, didn't, nice didn't, eyes. didn't the president say we were rangers? Is this sub a, a mech? Can we have a mech fight? Is that yeah. what we're supposed to do? Or um, I don't Dr. know. Dr. Dr. Gill says, Dr. Gil says no side. one's going to develop this understand. land unless it's me. I'm right. going to exploit these people in this land. <laughs> That's very helpful, Dr. Gill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to, I, I talked to a lot of teenagers in my day. And uh, they all had a lot of issues, um, but they all talked about this Power Rangers show. Um, and their, I know that their ship turned into a Megazord, and by their forces combined, they were able to fight a lot of bad guys. And uh, speaking of a lot of sense, Dr. Gill. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? You're speaking a lot of sense, Dr. Gill. I'm sure that one of these buttons here can. Uh, Turn this thing into a giant robot, and uh, we can Megazord the fuck out of this thing. Yeah, I like look around for like if there's like three keys or like <laughs> any sort of like three switches or something like that. All right. Um, there's two like human. There's two like hand shaped things. And, and like, one thing. Triangle. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> <the same> thing. <clears throat> well, in order for you to do that, I'm gonna get you to roll an understanding. Yeah. Now, as a Mormon fish, <laughs> um, I got six. You got six. All right. Atlantean Mormonism is just as ridiculous as belief that this, like... No, it's just this Mormonism. Jesus, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, who had no guild, was completely born in Atlantis. And was like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Where are you coming up with this? Well, no, okay. <laughs> Jesus did not have guilds. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, fish. Josh, you were saying something Fucking before. Utah. <laughs> God damn it. Saltfish Lake City. True story, I stayed in Utah for a night, and the first night I was there, I had dreams that I got inducted into a cult. And I was like, this is a prophecy. I'm just a Mormon now. <laughs> I need to leave Utah. <laughs> I need to leave right now. <laughs> um, so you, uh, you, you look around, and you don't find anything that immediately screams transformation into a cool mech. But Sorry, do you mean transistor into a cool mech? Yeah. No, that's different. That's transisting, transistoring. We're going to transistor into one cool mecha. Is that You're going to be transforming is a different phrase. Yeah, mecha is mecha. actually the plural, so it'd be one cool mech, Kelly. Just a quick <laughs> Yeah, mecha is plural. Correction there. Oh, there's no way I got that wrong on purpose. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you would purposely troll me on this show mm. during my game? Mm. <laughs> Rude. That's unbelievable. Mm. Anyway. audacity. What you guys see, instead of something like that, is just one giant glowing red flashing button. Hell yes! That not one person can press. It's too big for that. <laughs> it's almost like it needs three, well, two hands and a fin to slap down. What if we just had, like, three hands? Like, I push both hands down and I'm like, Dr. Gill! 
Push it with one hand. Well, that wouldn't work, obviously. What? Oh. Is this like a weight-based proposition, or like, is it a... It's a plot device-based device. Oh, this looks like a plot device, and I bring in Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Merlin, your voice keeps changing. You're fucking me up. No. That was my fish, fish part. <laughs> <laughs> that's his that's his mother tongue so guessing, guessing wait so when the air. fish part talks it sounds like that so I'm hearing a human voice where's that coming out of out of my ass <laughs> <laughs> the important note I should probably take that down <laughs> you, you, you have impressive pronunciation is there a tongue there as well <laughs> I don't know I don't know what Merlin anatomy is there. like oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I roll a constitution? <laughs> well, you're all body, which is basically constitution. Okay, I, I, I resist. Wait, are you I rolling a constitution the about the tongue? Absolutely, you, you're rolling you, you, constitution with an you guys about the tongue. Uh, resist getting yeah. tongue, but just barely. In the middle of, in, in the middle of a very well, stressful I didn't say I tried situation. To do it. I was just hinting. you're suggesting it. Oh yeah, but in a pretty yeah. seductive way. I feel like you're resisting the urge to boss. Can I? <laughs> well, you already rolled it. You succeeded. I'm just you know, okay. I'm just, I'm just all right. Backseat GM. So you see this giant red, flashing red button. I said red twice there. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be glowing it's and twice flashing. Red. The red. It's very red. Double red. <laughs> it's so red, you guys. It's, fuck this. It is, is red. It is meant I, to draw your attention. I look at him like that's so red. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone notice this button? <laughs> I'm just trying to fucking the button. I can't even yeah. say anything. <laughs> Everything's just everyone's gradually just like, and like we like down. all like intuitively are just reaching towards it. <laughs> and I, 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 as as your <laughs> as the tips of your fingers and thin graze against the button, oh. it presses down with almost no effort at all, and it's like a guitar riff starts playing in the background. <laughs> And the camera pans out as the ship begins to configure and transform. Perfect. Oh, okay. That works perfectly. That changed the part. Never been a guitar. Huh. Well, it works. That's the end of game song. Oh, well. Oh, well. That was fun. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> Time it is yet. How much time do I have to work with here? I don't know. Oh, I'm so over time. It's like a timer right there, isn't it? Is there? Yeah. I yep. We got oh, five minutes. I got five minutes. Perfect. What? I can make this happen. Is it possible to plug? Oh wait, you. Oh, sorry, you're finishing mm -hmm. now. Yeah. No, it's okay. Cause like, we don't have to actually hit the battle today. We just have to get the transformation sequence all done. And as you both land, the camera switches to like a landscape profile where you see one mech here and one mech here ready to battle. And what happens is how can happen to happen next week? <laughs> <laughs> I feel Sorry, like what? we accomplished very little. That's <laughs> as as someone who plays a lot of tabletop. Yeah, that's how that. Works. That's how. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how that works. You like, press the button. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, I am. I am a man for aerial attack. Yeah, oh yeah. In a in, like, in a tabletop game, and it was very bloody. And that was it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was like, that was our session. Is man yeah. did not get a sausage roll. He got a hot dog, and he murdered a vendor. <laughs> we saw them get their eyes gouged out for basically no reason. That is true. In one <laughs> session, I think it was my first session of my first like campaign, or my second campaign. Someone literally gouged someone's eyes out with an ice cream scoop. Oh, nice! Very violent. Very violent. I, I wouldn't say gouged. I would say scooped. <laughs> nah, I yeah. believe the, the the noise she used was like pop pop. It was a pop pop motion. That's the one. So very clean. Like it was a good roll. Yeah, but like expertly done. Really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well now you have three and a half minutes to plug your business. Oh, uh, <laughs> did you, uh, are there links associated with this? Can you do? I, I mean, I can put them in the in the video and stuff, but you can also verbally tell our millions of live viewers. Oh God! <laughs> oh, that live in the corner. That's yeah. how many people are watching. Yeah, yeah. one fifty thousand six hundred fifty. It keeps going up. That's Holy insane. Shit. It won't stop. <laughs> They're just all tuning in and dying to know what your Facebook handle is. Yeah, are you zero? Um, but what? like Spiraling Upward Fitness has a Facebook, that's and that's run I mean. run by Sam. Uh, and Saint, uh, Saint, you can contact us through her Instagram as well. Mm. Working on that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you are curious about personal training or like are kind of looking for something that's like a little bit different than maybe going to a big box gym and kind of getting like 
not the greatest treatment as like a, a, a person or a customer or whatever. Um, a big box that gym that'll charge you 60 to $90 for your uh, personal training and then also pay the trainer seven fifty per half hour training session. Yep, exactly. And we won't lie to you. We'll just be honest, like ethical business and uh, oh, yeah, your health and well being. That's kind of like the, the biggest thing. So uh, coming to hang out with us and just like talk and see if it's a good fit. Totally fucking free. There's no commitment whatsoever. Um, and if you want to keep going, we can keep going. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. All right. Because I only have uh, two 15 seconds. Less than two minutes. Does anybody else have anything to plug? I don't yet because I was going to do Extra Life in November. And then my friend's uh, semester projects for his university got super hectic. So we're going to wait till sometime in December. So in December... Wait for an extra life link. Okay. Donate to the children's hospital here in Edmonton. Watch me play video games for an unhealthy amount of time. What if I hate children? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say just don't kidding. donate. I'm going to say maybe donate. Maybe that kid will get too much morphine one day. <laughs> mm, <with the> hope <laughs> of Medical mishap. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, I am not a, I'm not a spokesperson for the Edmonton Children's Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't Josh, give kids too much morphine. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's Josh, okay. That's, 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 specifically for the Edmonton Hospital. Morphine, and that is the yeah. Give give me show. too much morphine. We've 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 yeah. come full circle because yeah. that was my very first piece of advice on this the show. So if anything, this is perfect. Uh, well, I would like uh, to make a plug. I think people should check out the show Born Under Punches, and if they're really feeling it, GM for it. Yes, look at how much fun it is today. Take me as an example of Please how much fun this could be. save this man one session. Become GM one session, <laughs> and you'll, you'll get some beer. He would have had free beer if he hadn't brought all this beer. Yeah. In addition. Also, like, you'll still get to meet me and get to realize you're better than me because I'll probably produce those episodes. So, <laughs> yeah, we're firing our current producer. It fucking sucks. <laughs> <sighs> Well, hopefully our producer does not cut us off before we have time for an anecdote. <laughs> oh, did you have time for it? Did you have an anecdote you wanted to tell? No, but I would love to hear one of yours. Oh, I do have an anecdote as this so happens, because winter is coming, as we know. Oh, Christ. And uh, I was feeling pretty lonely. And, uh, you know, um, I, uh, I was feeling lonely and cold. And so I... Well, I got back together with my ex, and my ex was understandably quite confused and said, hey, I thought that, like, you know, you'd broken up because you said I was overweight and it was a problem for you. And I was like, well, listen, I, what I said was in the past, but what I realized um, more recently is that I missed my warm lover's punches. <laughs> 